again and welcome to your number three video in this series. If you missed video one and two, go watch them. I'll wait here. No, really, I'll wait here. <laughs> well, in videos one and two, um, I shared how I struggled with drinking and for decades. And 11 years ago, I had to kind of come to terms with it and give myself permission. You know, once I discovered that deciding to not drink wasn't working for me at all, and really go back and watch it because it's a fun video on how I really thought that was the answer, but I had no idea the monster that I was really wrestling, right? And then how I got curious and I had to give myself permission, right? To, to really just kind of save my ass through doing the work of recovery because I knew that my life was just not gonna get better. I had to pick the pain, right? The pain of, of staying where I was or the pain of, of facing this, this unknown journey, right? Which I work really hard in creating content so that that pain is very um, easy to navigate, right? Because it's like when you go into a doctor's office, which one do you prefer? The doctor that tells you, hey, listen, I'm gonna give you a shot. It's gonna be, you know, a little icky, like it's gonna hurt, it's gonna be a second, and then you get a lollipop. Or the one that smiles, doesn't say anything, and then just I mean, I'd rather by far have the dude that says, hey, it's gonna be a minute, but yes, it's gonna hurt. Cause then you kinda like, you're prepared, right? So a lot of what I talk about is, hey, this is what the journey looked like, this is the monster that was going in through my head, and I've been in and out of this enough, and worked with enough people, to find that there are very common feelings that we experience and very common ideas and narratives. Some of them um, we have to release in order to grow, right? And some of them we have to learn, right? Because we've never been exposed to certain information when we begin and we come with so much shame and so much judgment, right? And if you add your own judgment to what is happening to you and in your life and what that must mean of who you are as a human being when you assess your um, drinking or drinking too much and what you know the consequences that you're having and then you add on the shame and the judgment that people you know put on on you because nobody understands and if you don't understand then you'll take your shame Right? And then you'll allow for other people to put their shame on you. And you're like, yep, hit me up with it because surely I deserve it. And so before you know it, you're like this light, little tiny ball of a human being that is also called you know, to, to, to take action and go do the work of recovery, right? And so if you are in that place where you feel like you're like a little, little human being in a ball and someone, let's say someone like me, comes and says, hey, you need to learn to love yourself and you need to go and do this and you need to, like how the hell are you supposed in that place where you're in a little ball and you have zero sense of self or self-esteem or self-trust or um, the ability to even see like beyond your shaky hands and, and the insanity that your life has become to all of a sudden get called into action to take you know powerful steps into recovery is a really, really high call. And so the reason why I say, you know, I talk a lot about this and I develop a lot of content about this is because I remember being there and because my story, and I didn't tell you this before because again, my, you know, my story is interesting and I tell it in layers, is I did get sober the first time in 2009. And then I, after five years, I got disconnected from all the things that kept me sober and I drank again. And so the next time that I came back into sobriety, I decided I was gonna do things differently because a lot of what I was missing during the first five years was so desperately necessary for me as a human being that has many layers, someone who has many layers, and I know that you do too. So in the second sobriety, um, I explored other things that made me feel more free and just more powerfully connected and, and just happier and more free. And so, 
to bring it back to what I was saying is I develop content from the place where I've been, where you may be. And so I want to be that person that guides you, right? So that your recovery journey is not like my first five years where all I was doing was kind of going through the motions, right? Sobriety felt almost like an icky thing that I had to do because I couldn't do the other, right? So there were parts of it that just felt like we're still secret, just to me. And I didn't really quite know how to talk about them, uh, except with the people in my group, which was very secret and very anonymous. And I didn't have permission from the world and certainly not from myself to love and embrace this part of me as a beautiful, beautiful, powerful um, part of the makeup of who I am. And so in my second sobriety, I decided to become a coach so that I could be a teacher and a companion and a mentor because here's the truth. There's just not enough content out there to help us navigate this really beautiful process with its highs and its lows. And in my, man, in my incredibly um, highs and lows, but, but very grace-filled, really, that's the best word, I don't know, grace-filled, you know, I'm grateful, it's just so multi-layered and rich and empowered uh, journey of recovery. I have found that the best and most important thing is to do it, you know, in connection with people that have done it before. People that um, can understand us, they can get us. Recovery and addiction and all the middle points, all the beautiful gray areas in between is a world that not a lot of people understand. In fact, 10% of us beautiful humans struggle with it, but the other 90 don't. And so chances are that the people in your family, I mean, not, maybe not, but maybe, don't get what you're doing. I mean, chances are you don't have a spouse or a daughter or a friend or a boss or a neighbor that says, man, I see what you're struggling with and I get it, I really do. I know that you said that you weren't gonna do it, but you did it yesterday and you kind of messed up our party, but it's okay, we get it. Don't feel shame, don't feel bad. Just, you know, pick up, start over, try again, go get help, go get connected. Nobody says this. They say, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you doing this to yourself? And even more importantly, why are you doing this to us? They don't get it. And it's okay, I have a lot of compassion for them because to the rational person who doesn't understand this um, insanity, really, that is addiction, this beautiful monster that, that I am honored to have as part of who I am, um, they don't get it. And why would they, right? But I do. And so my mission and my job is to help you enter this recovery journey armed with the hard truths, right? With big ass doses of reality, but also keeping your eyes on the end game, where the light is, where the transformation is, because that's my mission, right? I'm all about dropping the shame and dropping the stigma, but I'm also about saying, hey, yeah, I'm gonna tell you, this is gonna suck for a little while. And this is how I did it. And I'm gonna share my path without telling you that you have to follow that path, right? because recovery is highly personal and what works for me may not work for you. But I do know that coaching, coaching is like every other mentorship relationship, a powerful connection where I get the honor of walking the journey with you. And you get the chance to face those unknowns without staying stuck in old narratives because I'm gonna call your bullshit, right? because you may be able to bullshit your way through life and those around you, but I've said all the stuff that you're saying that is allowing you to justify and stay stuck wherever it is that you are, right? And I'm gonna help you keep shifting, right? Do the work, 
get to action, keep shifting, let's keep moving forward, right? And so how do we, you and I, start this powerful coaching relationship? Because of course right now you're like, hey, that sounds great, but what does that look like? What does that mean? And more importantly, what does that cost? Well, a million dollars. Um, because one-on-one -on -one coaching is an investment that you do in yourself and not everyone can do it and if you can I invite you to try it because for me it multiplied tenfold that investment which felt scary multiplied tenfold not only was I not spending the crazy amounts that I was spending on booze and all the shitty food and all the consequences it was having in my life but the person that I ended up being just was a person that could generate um, and produce, you know, a million times more than the rag of a human being that I was, right? In every way, I was a powerful um, executive. I could be a powerful mother. And when I say powerful, I mean like in the power of me, not that I'm putting my power over other people. Please know that my words are always gonna be when it comes to the resources that come from the outside, from that connection with myself. I could become a human being that could trust themselves to do what they said that they were gonna do. And therefore, as I navigated through life, I kind of navigated with a belief in self and a kind of a sense of I love myself. And that feels really good. There's no money that you know can pay for that. And I got that as a result of my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're able to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I invite you to do it. But if you aren't, that's why I want to invite you to consider taking a course. It's a coaching course that has all the basics of where I started. Like I would have killed 15 years ago, you know, 11 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago to even get the beginning of the insight of what I share in this journey. Because if you're stuck, there's that part of you that says, I need information. There's that part of you that says, I need inspiration. And then there's a part of you that says, I can't do this, right? And there's another part that maybe says, well, I, I fuck the inspiration and information. I just wanna know what to do right now to feel better, which is again, a path of action, right? Great, tell me what to do. So in this course, which I have five hours almost of videos, um, I do that. I give you the information, the inspiration, right? And then the call to action. And, and that whole course can be yours so that you can get started. And it gets you connected to me. In other words, every student of my course begins an email connection with me in which you get a chance to ask me all the questions that you can, that you have, that you would muster, you know, to, Share with me what you're going through because, you know, your story may look different, but chances are I've been in scenarios that are similar and I can help you release the stuff that, you know, you that just like the forest for the trees, right? Right now, you may feel like underwater. My job is to get you not just above water, but like, oh, all right, well, the mountains are there, the sky is there, and that's the ocean. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so that's my job. So swing by my page to look at the resources, but more importantly, click below and get started with understanding how this course can be yours. If you get the bundle, because if you're gonna begin, just begin, begin powerfully, right? The bundle actually has the coaching course together with coaching meditations. This coaching meditations thing is the thing I came up with because meditating is great, but it almost felt a little passive when it came to you know how I was beginning this process. And so when I added the coaching into the meditation, it's almost like a velvet hammer where yes, you begin your day listening to this very powerful scenario of meditation, but it also kind of adds an element of accountability to the whole narrative. It's powerful, it's a genre of its own, and I'm very proud to present this to you that can help you navigate the first 30 days of your recovery. So get the bundle, get started today, put away that little thing of tomorrow. We've already talked about tomorrow doesn't really work for us, right? And hey, listen, by the way, my job is not to convince you. 
my call to action and saying, get this and get that and get the bundle and da 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 and start. Um, my job is not to pressure you or to convince you or to explain to you how relevant, you know, this investment in you. A lot of coaches do that. They even do the 72 hours to close down and I'm gonna, I, 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 I don't like those techniques because it's not like you need extra anxiety and pressure. My job is just to say, hey, listen, I struggled with what you struggle, more than likely what you're struggling because otherwise you wouldn't be here watching this content. I, I, I'm committed to speaking your language because I have it, because I've been where you are. My job is to raise a mirror to you and ask you to take a, a really stark, honest look at where you're at with your life, you know? where you're at in the roles that you came to this world to play with your parenting. If you're a parent, that's a role, mom, dad, you know, with your being a brother or a sister or a daughter or a son or a creator or an employee or an artist or just any of the beautiful roles that we get to play in this lifetime are diminished. The light is taken out of them when we are stuck in a loop of addiction or toxic habit. And if you don't know the difference, awesome, it's in my course, I'll explain to you. Um, but mostly, aside from the roles, who you came here to be, not the roles that you play, but who you came here to be. I was not able to tap into the best version of Pamela until I got sober. And not sober, just abstinent, not just put the plug in the jug and don't drink one day at a time. More like <laughs> sober, badass, thriving, awake, aware, and full of resources to reconnect myself to that place when the shit hits the fan, because I still have shitty days, I'm human. And recovery is not tinker dust that just, you know, is spread through your life and everything is great. Recovery is that place of pause that you get in between what life throws at you with the multiple characters in the script of your life and how you react to that life, how you engage, how you interact, are you gonna operate out of fear and lack and, and just, you know, smallness? Or are you going to operate out of abundance and love and connection and ownership? <laughs> just, can you imagine the two worlds that, that I had the fortune of experiencing, the addiction world, the active addiction, and then the recovery, badass, empowered world that I'm talking to you about. Uh, in the between, there was the just I'm sober and life feels colorless and it's difficult and I take it one day at a time thing. I did that too. And you don't wanna do that because if you're sober already but you're kind of living there, then maybe this course is for you as well. So that's, that's my job. It's not to convince you, it's to share what I went through, how my life is now, and to say, hey, I got stuff that can guide you so that you can start. I'm not magically going to whisper into your, you know, blow into your, the tinker dust, right? Or whisper into your ear a magic solution and have a, you know, magic thing happen in your life. The work is done by you. But I'm, I'm opening that curtain with you. I'm showing you what's behind that curtain and I'm asking you, and I'm gonna hold you accountable by the way, for you to walk into that space where you get to discover your best version of you. So, I hope you join me. I hope you get curious. I hope you start questioning. I hope that if you can't trust yourself now, at least you trust that I can guide you to a place where you can develop all of that connection that you're missing with the world, but most importantly with you. Life feels really different for me today, and I really hope that you can join me in feeling the same for yourself. Okay. See you soon.